boys and girls, moms and dads, this is Angela at Northway County Public Library. My co-workers and I, we have been having a really good time making a program for you called Castle Times Castle Tales. Well, in our own castle, we found some flannel board stories that are really fun. And there are flannel board stories, and there's also just little, they're called vignettes, about what life might have been like if you lived in a castle. This is the story of Sleeping Beauty. In an enchanted land far away, there lived a king and queen. They loved each other very much and wanted to have a child. Their wish came true and they were blessed with a beautiful baby girl. They named her Aurora. A party was planned in honor of the birth. All the kingdom was invited except one of the 13 fairies because there were only 12 golden dinner plates. On the day of the party, the 13th fairy came and was very upset about not being invited. For her gift to the princess, she cast a spell that would cause the prince to prick her finger on a spindle and die before her 16th birthday. A kinder, wiser fairy touched the princess on the head and said she would not die but would sleep for a hundred years and then the kiss of a prince would waken her. The king didn't want his daughter to sleep for a hundred years and ordered all the spinning wheels within 10 miles of the royal palace to be burned. Aurora grew up not knowing how to spin or sew. The years passed quickly and the day before Princess Aurora's 16th birthday was very busy in preparation for her birthday party. To stay out of the way, Aurora wandered up a deserted tower. There she saw an old woman with a spinning wheel. Curious, Aurora asked if she could try. Of course, the wicked fairy had hoped for that very thing. Princess Aurora reached out and pricked her finger. Immediately, she fell into a deep sleep. The kind fairy came to the castle and put everyone under a spell that would cause them to sleep too. She then caused vines of thorns to cover the castle. Nearly 100 years passed when a prince came hunting in the area. He became lost and trying to find his way back to the hunting party, saw the castle in the distance. The kind fairy appeared to him and told him that the beautiful princess was asleep inside. The fairy told the prince that only a kiss from a courageous man could rescue the sleeping beauty. Excited by the prospect, the prince went to the castle, and true to the fairy's words, the castle was covered with thick briars. He worked steadily and was able to enter the castle. He found Princess Aurora and was taken by her beauty. He kissed her and the whole kingdom awoke. The prince asked Aurora to marry him, and they lived happily ever after. Lords and ladies of the castle, I greet you. We are in the castle gardens today, and I work painstakingly on my embroidery. With needle and thread, I am making a flower to be part of this delightful Bayou Tapestry many ladies and I have been working on. You see, it is a series of vivid scenes and Latin text that relate the invasion of England by William of Normandy and his victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Ah, oh, but it grows warm and I tire. I bid you adieu. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella who lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. The stepmother and her daughters were very cruel to Cinderella. They expected Cinderella to wait upon them and do all the household chores. Cinderella was a very good-natured girl who bore the unfairness with patience and love. The king of the land sent a proclamation out to all the maidens 
that a ball was to be held in honor of the prince. Excitement was in the air as every girl in the land prepared for the special day. Cinderella and her stepsisters were no exception. On the evening of the ball, Cinderella still had not found suitable clothes to wear, and of course her stepmother and sisters would not help by lending her something. With a broken heart, Cinderella waved goodbye to the only family she had. Cinderella turned to go to her room, and there stood her fairy godmother. Of course, Cinderella didn't know this at the time. "'Why do you have such a sad countenance, Cinderella?' asked the fairy godmother. Cinderella smiled sadly and told her of the grand ball in honor of the prince and that she was unable to go. The fairy godmother said that maybe she could help. She then went out into the garden and found a large pumpkin, a rat, and four mice. A wave of her magic wand brought a carriage complete with driver and four beautiful white horses. The fairy godmother then turned Cinderella's tattered dress into a beautiful gown and her shoes into glass slippers. Off Cinderella went to the ball with the instructions to be home by the stroke of twelve because the spell would end at midnight. She had a wonderful time dancing with the prince. Bong, bong, bong. Cinderella had forgotten to watch the time. She ran out of the castle and left a glass slipper behind. The prince followed behind but could not catch her. He found the glass slipper and felt hope that he would be able to find Cinderella. The next day, the prince took the shoe to all the houses in the kin kingdom, searching for the girl whose foot the shoe would fit. When he came to Cinderella's home, the two stepsisters did all they could, just short of cutting off a heel or a toe, to make the glass slipper fit. Of course they couldn't get the slipper on. Finally, it was Cinderella's turn to try on the glass slipper. Her foot slid neatly into the shoe. The prince looked into Cinderella's eyes and knew he had finally found the woman he had fallen in love with the previous night. The prince asked Cinderella to marry him. She accepted, and they lived happily ever after. Oh, the celebration was wonderful. The jugglers, oh, Mr. Dancing Bear there is all worn out. I heard a wonderful story about good King Wenceslas. Here's a song about him and what it sounds like on the recorder. Another popular dance was the egg dance. Eggs were a symbol of rebirth, and at the beginning of the year, eggs were placed on the ground 
and carefully danced around. Try not to break any. Another popular game is croquet. Riding stick horses. javelins. Indoors on a rainy day, dice games were very popular. Yahtzee! And draughts, also known as checkers. King me. Aww. This is so exciting. The traveling minstrels will be here soon. There will be singing and dancing, poetry, stories, and games. They will play instruments like this modern family of recorders. Recorders were found in the Middle Ages. They were made of wood. In 1940, a castle in Normandy was excavated, and there was a recorder in the moat. I'd like to read you the story of Rumpelstiltskin. It's so fun to say. Would you like to say it with me? Rumpelstiltskin. There was once a miller who had a very lovely daughter. Sometimes the miller was known to boast and say things that weren't quite true. One day, while the miller was speaking with the king, he be began to boast about his lovely daughter. He boasted of her many talents and went so far as to say that his daughter could spin straw into gold. Well, when the king heard straw into gold, he decided to see if it was true. He told the miller to bring his daughter to the castle. The next day, the miller delivered his daughter to the king. The king was taken by the young maiden's beauty and told the miller that if she really could straw, spin straw into gold, he would marry her, and if what he said were untrue, he would be punished. The king placed the maiden in a room with a pile of straw and said that he would return the next morning. Of course, the maiden was terribly sad and frightened, for she couldn't really spin straw into gold. She began to cry, worrying about what the king would do to her and her father when he found out the truth. A funny little man appeared and asked what all the fuss was about. With tears in her eyes, the maiden explained her plight. The little man laughed and said, He could spin straw into gold easy. The maiden stopped crying and pleaded with the little man to help her. He asked what she would give him for his help. The maiden didn't have much, but she offered her ring as payment. The little man went right to work. The next morning when the king came to check on the maiden, he was very surprised to find a basket full of gold thread. The king was thrilled and ordered twice as much straw to be placed in the room with the maiden. He said he would return the following morning. Again, the girl began to cry, not knowing what to do. The little man appeared and again asked what the fuss was all about. She told him she was in the same dilemma as the day before and asked him to help. She offered her necklace as payment. The little man agreed and went right to work. The next morning when the king returned, he was delighted to find not one, but two baskets filled with gold thread. He thanked the maiden and told her if she would do one more bunch of straw, he would never require her to work again. The king ordered three times as much straw to be placed in the room and said he would return the following morning. The girl waited and waited for the little man to come, but he didn't. Worried, she began to cry. Finally, the little man appeared. Again, he asked what all the fuss was about, and again she told him and pleaded for his help. 
The little man asked what she would give him for his work. The maiden began to cry harder, for she had no worldly possessions left. Scratching his chin, the little man said, he would do the job if she agreed to give him her firstborn child. Reluctantly, the maiden agreed. The next morning, when the king entered the room, he found three baskets of gold thread. He was true to his word and married the young maiden, never requiring her to work again. A year later, the couple was blessed with a child. The maiden, now the queen, had forgotten the promise she had made to the little man. It was a surprise to her when he appeared and demanded the child as payment. The queen pleaded with the little man not to take her baby, for she loved it very much. She offered him riches of every kind, but the little man refused her offer. Laughing at the queen, the little man said he would give her a chance to keep the baby. If you can tell me what my name is within three days, I'll let you keep your baby, said the little man. On the first day, the little man appeared and said, what is my name? The queen replied, is your name David, Henry, Clyde? With each name, the little man would chuckle and say, no. Before the little man returned the following day, the queen asked all who were in her court to give her different names. She felt prepared when the little man returned. Once again, the queen began, is your name Horace? Malcolm, Trevor, and with each name, the little man would laugh a little louder and shout, no. The queen was feeling desperate and ordered everyone in her kingdom to give her names. The queen's lady-in-waiting was taking a stroll that evening in the forest when she heard laughing. She followed the sound and found a little man dancing around the fire and chanting, Tomorrow by the day's end, the queen's baby will soon be my friend. The queen's efforts are very lame, for she doesn't know. Rumpelstiltskin is my name. The lady ran to the queen and told her everything she saw. The next day, when the little man came to the queen, she looked very sad. The little man was excited and said, let's hurry this thing along. What's my name? Sighing, the queen said, is your name Robert or Rufus? No, no, screamed the little man. The queen said, could your name be Rumpelstiltskin? When the little man heard his name, he went into a fury and started stomping and screaming until he stomped himself right down into the floor and was never seen again. Welcome to the castle kitchen. You've been invited to stay for lunch. So what are we having? The medieval diet was grain-based and cereal-based. You ate a lot of oats and if you found berries or seeds, that made it better. Sometimes beans, a lot of bread. This crust of bread is accompanied by chives and thyme from the forest floor. That will give it a little more flavor. There were carrots and root vegetables. Later on, potatoes and rice if you lived further south toward the Mediterranean. Corn, of course, came from the New World. Only if you were wealthy would you be able to have some meat and cheese. Meals were served twice a day. Pottage, porridge, gruel. It's what's for lunch. Oh. These castles are so cold on winter days. I love the castle my father built for us. It keeps us safe. The walls are eight feet thick. It even has windows. 
but the windows have no drapes, they have no glass, and on winter days, it's so cold. Thank heaven for ye ancient dog of Malta. He keeps me warm on winter days. Hi. Well, we've had a lot of fun with our castle tales, castle times. There is one book in our junior collection, nonfiction, that I'd like you to know about because some boys and girls, they like to build things. Have you ever thought about building a castle? That's what this book is about. I learned many wonderful and informative things. For one thing, you do not build a castle in a day or two, or a week or two, or a year or two. This castle took a good 15 years to build. You build castles from the inside out because not only is it someone's home sweet home, it's a place of protection. It's called Castle. It's by David McCauley. And if you like to build things, you'll like this book. We've been having fun making a summer reading program called Castle Times Castle Tales. It's part of Imagine Your Story, our summer reading program. There's still time to sign up at North Lake Co. Library dot read squared dot com come and join us we're all kings and queens princes and princesses bye now